So this next, uh, these next two units, again, like I said, they're based on the, uh, the one we just did. You got to know all that language, all those symbols, all the intersections and unions and all that stuff. Plus, we're going to build in a bunch more things. Now, so this unit's called counting methods. And if you've ever needed a study sheet, this is the one, okay? The next two. Because we're going to learn tons and tons more. Well, look, tip of the iceberg, the last unit. Now we're going to learn a whole bunch of things. You're going to have to learn how if, you know, you rolled a die and you roll and, or you rolled two die, okay? What are the chances the sum would be over than f greater than five? Okay, if you pull two socks out of a drawer, okay, what would the probability be that one's black, one's white? Okay, uh, replacement, non-replacement. Okay, tons and tons of things to know. So first of all, we're going to just go to the. We're not going to really talk about the investigation right now. I want to move on. So today we're going to talk about what's called the fundamental counting principle. Now the fundamental counting principle, it applies to tasks that are related to the word and, not or. Could not use it for or can use it for and. What does and always mean? In the, yeah, it would mean intersection in the two, but it actually means times when you say, well, you'll see what in a second, okay? So you're always going to times when you use, when you see the word and in a sentence. Now the fundamental counting principle, again, there it is, it states that if one task can be, be performed in A ways, that's not supposed to be A, it's A ways, and another task can be formed in B ways, then the task can be performed in A times B ways, okay? So this is A and B. Now, the fundamental counting principle, one more time, there's that word, can be extended to more than two tasks. If one task can be performed in A ways, and another can be done in B ways, and another in C ways, and so on, then they can be f performed in A times B times C ways. Okay, the fundamental counting principle does not apply when tasks are related to the word or in the case of an or situation. Okay, so the tasks that are mutually exclusive that involve two disjoint sets A and B, so this isn't saying A times, so if you have two disjoint sets the number of A or B should be the number in A plus the number in B. Okay, what does this word mean? What's that symbol mean? Union. Yeah, it means or. So what I'm saying is if you had these two, mute these two disjoint sets, and you had A and you had B, Okay, if you had six things here and seven things there, you would have 13 items, right? Now, if the tasks are not mutually exclusive, they involve two sets that are not disjoint. These words kind of mean the same. C and D. So the N, C or D equals NC plus ND minus, what's this called? This is the football, right? 
So this is what we mean by C or D. So this is review, right? You guys have seen that many times. Okay, so this is the football right there, right? Okay, the principle of inclusion or exclusion must be used to avoid counting elements in the intersection more than once. Okay, so we included the middle here. We counted the middle twice, didn't we? So we will subtract it out to get it once. Now, there's outcome tables, organization lists, tree diagrams can all be used to solve counting principles. They have the added benefit of displaying all the possible outcomes. Okay, so um, we need a lot of strategies to be able to do these. Now, let's just start with a nice simple example. Hannah plays on her school soccer team. The uniform has three different sweaters, red, white, and black, and three different shorts, red, white, and black. How many different variations of the school uniform can the coach choose for each team? Now, so first I'm going to talk about how to do a tree diagram. And you may be asked to do something like this in the diploma, or they will just give it to you as a picture. So let's talk about how the tree diagram would look. So there's three sweaters. So there's sweater one, two, and three. And yeah, you're right. We could call that red, white, and black. And then we have three shorts. So what you do is you go like this. You have red, white, or black. Red, white, or black. Red, Austin, oh, so you need to copy this down, right? White, or black. Now, a possible combination, red, red. This one is red, white. This one is red, black. Okay, this next one is white. Red, white, white. And this is white, black. This one is black, red, black, white, and black, black. Now all of those are unique, right? There isn't two of the same combination up there. So how many different combinations can we have? There's nine. So that is your, how your tree diagram, and those, those are all the outcomes. These are all the outcomes. Now there's so many questions that could be asked here. Okay, so you just, they could just say, uh, what are the chances that Hannah would wear uh, like all red? It's a one out of nine chance, right? You see it right there. There's the red, red. There is only one of them. But they may ask it like this. What is the combination or what are the chances that she would wear black or white So that could be white or black, or black or white, right? Or they may ask, what are the chances she would wear both the same color? With three out of nine, one out of three chance. Okay? 
So you really, like, you want to talk about, like, even as math teachers, like, this is the unit, the next two units, like, you g we, when we're doing all our tests and stuff, that's when you have to be so sharp. If you really want to do well the night before this test and get these right, <coughs> you got to be so well rested, right? You got to be very, very sharp. It's in the morning, you know, if you're, if you're, not a morning person you need to be getting up in the mornings a lot for the like three weeks before don't sleep in till noon and then wake up for your you know nine o'clock test on one day it will not go well it's true <coughs> well, you know what like i used to do a lot of races in my younger years and if you drank gatorade and they had powerade for the uh race don't drink it oh You'd think it's the same stuff, eh? Oh, you get sick. It just doesn't work. If you don't, like some people eat during a race, right? Like when you're out there for four hours, you eat. Yeah, you carry food with you. Well, if you haven't ate before ever on your long runs, you don't just, hey, maybe I'll eat this time, right? If you haven't worn those clothes, if you haven't worn those shoes, like it's just don't do it now, right? And if... If you're running a race and you're running like 20 miles, don't go, hey, I'm going to go buy a new pair of shoes tonight. I can't wait. I'm so excited. What? You've never ran in those before? You guys may think, what's the big deal? New shoes? All good, right? Well, you don't know if they fit right, you know, right? So if you're, uh, yeah, if you're going to get ready for a 9 o'clock uh, diploma, obviously make sure you know your math and make sure you're very well rested. This is the stuff that you got to be so alert for. So... Now, we could do this by the fundamental accounting principle because it's three, or I'm just going to write it like three because there's three uh, sweaters. Sorry. Times three shorts equals nine. But I could make that harder. I could say, how many possibilities are there if she could not wear two of the same color. Right. So that would be three times two because now I put a restriction on it. Because she's got three choices for the first one, but now that she's taken one color out, how many choices does she have for the second one? Two. So it's three times two. Right? Same with, you know, picking your like uh, a pin number for your whatever bank account whatever the number of possibilities is very different than if it says and you're not allowed repeating any numbers okay so all those things like it's like okay this is another one of these right and i have <coughs> you know i was two diplomas ago that even the teachers disagreed on on one question uh, at a department meeting. They're like, no, it's this. No, no, this is what it is, right? So it was a very, very, very hard question. It was just about people, four people. There's four seats, right, on a plane. And what are, the, what are all the different ways those four people could sit in those four seats, right? And uh, some people thought it was order didn't matter. Some people said, no, order matters because a window seat is very different than an aisle seat. Right? See, it's true. So if you take assumptions, you'd go this way. If you're like, hey, a seat's a seat, doesn't matter, then you would treat it a totally different way. Well, you, we don't know the answers to the diploma, so, well. Depends, because if order doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, we'll, we'll stress you out more of that later. Now, a luggage lock opens with the correct three-digit code. Each wheel rotates digits zero through nine. How many? And now this is so crucial. And, and students that do not show up to class get these, this one wrong. Okay, now this is like a one out of ten for difficulty, and they still get it wrong. Okay, now... How many digits do you have for the first number? For the first number. No, for the first, 
first spot, I should say. For the first spot, how many choices do you have? Ten. Nine or ten? Ten. ten. Yeah, count them out. But I get, you'll see in the, they will have this, you guys. They will have that on the diploma ready for you. They don't, they just want to see if you actually, if you show up to class every day, there's a lot of things that you will learn in here that they just want to see if you'll know on the diploma. Okay? And that's not, this isn't math. This is totally logical. Okay? Now, how many digits do I have for the next one? Ten. Now, if repeats were not allowed, do you see how it would be nine? Yeah. But it says, and you've got to be very, very careful that if it doesn't say repeats aren't allowed, that means they are. Okay? Uh, and how many digit, how many three digit codes are possible for the last one? So that is, oops, sorry. This is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000 different combinations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, everybody back here. Now, that means I have a 3 and a 7 and a 5. Not a 3 or a 7 or a 5, right? That's why we don't add them, we multiply them. And the this is very different too. And you need to know this, okay? So we've got to listen carefully. Uh, if I asked you just about a combination, zero is allowed for the first number, okay? Obviously. But if I ask you for a three-digit number, give me a three-digit number. That's all I'm asking. Not, not a combination, a three-digit number. 028 is not a three-digit number. Okay. But do you see how 028 is not a three-digit number? That's a two-digit number. So that means there would only be nine choices for the first one, ten for the second, ten for the third. Okay. So, so zero is not allowed if they're looking for just actual numbers. Like zero one is not a two-digit number. That's one. One zero is a two-digit number, isn't it? Ten. Okay. So enough of those will come. We'll just now suppose each digit can be only used once. So already starting to get more specific. So you have your three digits. I'm allowed zero through nine for the first one, right? But one of them has been used now. So, how many do I have for the next one? Nine. And the last one, eight. So that would be 720. Now, here's things that can be done. You have a three-digit combination, numbers zero through ten, and each number, but you tell somebody what the first digit is how many different numbers do they now have to try to get into your locker? Okay, so you have three, it's a three-digit combination, zero through ten, but you tell somebody what your first digit is. You're like, I'm not going to tell you my combination, I'll tell you the first digit. Now how many? Okay, well, the first one, how many numbers are there for the first one? You gave it to me. You gave me that digit. You told me the first digit. So now I'd have to guess the other two. So just by giving me the first digit, I now have taken what would have taken me a thousand different tries has now gone down to a hundred. Okay? So you have to be careful of the restrictions. And th they give us things like this. And I'm going to give you strategies. I'm going to go, okay, every time you see this, I need you to do this. Every time you see this, you need to do this. That's why we need a good study sheet. That's why you need to be showing up every day because all of these little things will be adding up and adding up and adding up, right? Now, the other thing that we're going to be talking about a lot are cards. Okay, I've got people talking, so I'm going to wait here. Now, 
I just want to give you all the different things that will be asked. There's obviously your four suits. Okay, does everybody know that this is your clubs? So you're not going to give this, get this picture given to you. This is spades. Okay, these will also be referred to as the red cards, and these will be referred to as the black cards. So they say, what's the, what are the chances of pulling a black card and an ace of hearts? Okay, well, let's not get to answers right now. I'm just telling you different kind of questions. These right here are called face cards. So you need to know that face cards are your ten, or your, sorry, your jack, queen, and king. So they're the royal family because they all have faces on them. That's where they get their names from. So will you get this picture every time? No. Okay, well, uh, you'll never get it. So you need to know how many of, there are of each suit are there? Thirteen. Okay, so remember there's thirteen of each. A deck is 52 cards, so the joker will, will not be ever included. So you have to know there's 52. There is four, uh, four suits of 13 each. There is 12 face cards. Okay, there's six black, there's six red. There's 26 red cards, there's 26 black cards. You've got to know all of that. Okay? Now, we are going to be just doing questions with these cards. And again, they are different by little, might seem insignificant, one word extra, right? But it means a difference, okay? Now, what? It says count the number of possibilities of drawing a single card. So you're just going to pull one card, okay? Because later we'll be pulling two cards or three cards, and sometimes we'll be putting the cards back, and sometimes we'll keep them out. Now, do you see when you pull a card, the chances of in the next one are different? Because it was one out of 52 of pulling the first one. Now it may be one out of 51 for the next one. Now, yeah, should say face. Okay, so now either a black face card or an ace. So this is the, it's N, A, or B. So that's the number of A plus the number of B. The number of A. No. Black face cards. Plus an ace. There's four aces. So so and we'll get to more to probability more the next unit, but you have a ten out of fifty two chance of pulling a black face card or an ace. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, this is where things are different. It says pulling either a red card or a ten. Okay, so, so someone said it. Could you pull, before, could, in the last one, could you pull a black face card that was an ace? No. But for this one, can you pull a red card that is a 10? Yes. See, we're starting, this was those two. Now we're dealing with this scenario here where we have a red and we have a 10, how many red 10s are there? Okay, so therefore, how many will be in the red, the whole circle? How many should be in the whole circle? 
26 in the whole circle, so this little part should be 24. And how many would be? So there's four tens, correct? So there'd be two there. Now, the formula was N, A, or B again. Is N, A plus N, B minus N, A, and B. So, there was 26 red cards. There was four tens minus the football because it was counted twice. So, this is 28. What, how would we label A and how would we label B? What kind of sets are they? Good. A is, this is disjoint. That means you use this formula. This is not disjoint. Therefore, you must always subtract the AND out. So there would be a 28 out of 52, and you would always reduce those fractions as well, but... Okay, so we're just going to work on these, and then I'll give you time to work on uh, the work in class. Okay, and now th these are very, very common in the diploma. <coughs> License plates, uh, there will be one of them for sure, both on the 30-1 and 30-2. Alberta license plate has three letters followed by three digits. So the first thing I always do, and again, strategies, doing these over and over again. Okay, Tony, you need to put that on my desk, please. So I have three letters followed by three digits. So always draw your blanks first. Okay? Do that. Now, how many... Okay, so for example, okay? So the letters <coughs> I and O are not used to avoid confusion with the digits 1 through 10. Okay? Now, are repeats allowed? It doesn't say they're not. You cannot make assumptions. It will say repeats are not allowed. If it doesn't say that, it means they're allowed. So how many choices do I have for the first? So this is going to be letter, 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 correct? How many choices do I have for the first letter? 24. So another thing you must remember, there is 26 letters in the alphabet. Okay. And the other thing you need to know is vowels. E, E, I, O, and U. And we're not even going to count Y. Okay. So, again, this, this is stuff that has to be, like, assumed. You know your letters, right? You know your vowels, how many. You know if it's repeats, not repeats. They've given us limitations, not allowed to use I and O, so I'm going to go 24, 24, 24. Then the digits, then followed by three digits. That's all it says. Am I allowed to use one and zero? Yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't say I can't. So these are the digits. So that is. 10, 10, 10. Then you multiply those together. Okay, so you got to go 24 times 24. Now, don't go 24 times 3. That does not mean 24 times 24 times. That's 24 cubed. I get that all the time. Students multiply. They're like, look, there's three 24s. I multiply. No, that's actually 24 plus 24 plus 24. They're like, no, I multiplied. I'm like, no, you didn't. You actually, I did. Look, 24 times 3, and they'll show the time sign. I'm like, okay, I get you multiplied by 3, but that's actually adding 24, 24, 24. No, that's 
So 13 million 824,000. So you can see the uh, this being a multiple choice question, right? You got it. You will f you will find in this unit probably more than all the rest that if you don't do all your homework, you will you you won't be good at this. It takes so much practice. Take that from. Uh, this is a very confusing unit if you don't start getting rules. And you'll only get that by doing them over and over. Because of the growing number of vehicles, the province is changing the plates with three letters followed by four digits. For example, A, B, C, 1, and 3, 4. How many more license plates are possible? So they're not asking how many. They're asking how many more license plates are now possible. Okay, so first of all, let's set up our license plate. The restrictions did not change. It's still 24 times 24 times 24. But we're going to add, sorry, uh, there's four digits there. I'm going to add my four digits. Okay, this will give 138 million 240 thousand plates here. Okay, that's how many different plates. They actually did do this. They added one more letter, I think. No, uh, yeah, one more number. So now I'm going to take these two, and I'm going to take this, or actually I'm going to have to subtract this 138240000, and you'll get 124,416,000 more or additional combinations. And actually even this word is not good to use because it's not actually a combination, it's a permutation. A combination is when order doesn't matter. So if I say Okay, you three people, I need you to go uh, to the office and grab a bunch of stuff for me. The order I pick them doesn't matter. But if uh, one person gets first place, second, and third place, order does matter, right? When order matters, it's a permutation. When order doesn't matter, it's a combination. So when you use a... When you go to your lock, does order matter? So it's not a combination lock. It's actually a permutation lock. Okay, You've been lied to all these years. So whenever you need to get someone's locker and you're like, hey, what's your com? You have no idea what you're talking about. You should be saying, hey, what's your perm? Okay, so page 22, number 1, and page 26 and 27. And again, you have to decide out of today what stuff you want on your study sheet. I would get a tree diagram in there. I would talk about the, the and versus the or your disjoint sets. Okay, maybe even all the parts of a, uh, all your cards too. 